I'm Sam from Cultaholic and I am your reigning and defending Cultaholic champion and I'm here to welcome you to our predictions for AEW Full Gear 2020. So, same as always, the belt will be on the line. There is no punishment this time, but all the regular content around the event will be going up. We'll have a live stream with Jack and Owen. They'll also be graded and what happened at. So let's just crack straight on with the pre-show match predictions. This is Alison Kay taking on Serena Deeb for Deeb's NWA World Women's title. Now, it's been interesting watching NWA and AEW kind of gently flirt here for a little bit, and I think that this is sort of how it's going to keep going for a while. I don't think that Serena Deeb is going to drop the title here. I think that this is more of maybe like an exposure type thing for now that's going to blossom into a relationship once NWA returns. I think once NWA is back, we might see some talent moving between both promotions. But I just don't think that NWA would want their titles changing hands on a pre-show match on another company's card. I think it's best to just wait a little bit and just let this relationship grow, as I said. So I'm going for Serena Deeb. I'm Ross Twardell, and welcome to Full Gear. Aren't autonomous cars absolutely fantastic? But anyway, Serena Deeb for the victory here. First of all, because she is absolutely fantastic at the professional wrestling. Second of all, she does all of the yoga, which I know, according to DDP, is a very good thing indeed. And third of all, because Serena Deeb, of all people, is going to be extra motivated at an event called Full Gear, because as you all know, in some circles, gear is drugs. And being a part of the Straight Edge Society, Serena Deeb is going to be wanting to do CM Punk proud by winning at an event called Full Gear. Stay off the drugs, kids. Hey everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com, joined by Owen Hello. from Cultaholic.com. You may recognise him if you watch our Twitch streams every Wednesday from 6 p.m. If not, Owen, I'll, expl I'll explain what you do a little Don't bit. Worry. Go on, I'll, I'll let you do it. One of the one of the editors, a cultaholic, also my flatmate. Yes. Sam used to live with us and then he went off to be independent. So Sam, you're a fraud. He is a fraud. Leaving us like this. So now it's just me and Owen, it's fine. We're not bitter about it or anything. Oh, we're having a great time. Owen's stepping in uh, yes. to fill in for predictions this time around. Uh, and we don't know what we're going to do if he wins. So. Well, I know what's going to happen if I win. Well, you're going to run off with the belt, aren't Absolutely. You? Yeah, You'll man. never see me again. That belt's mine, Jack. Sam, same. that belt's mine. Oh, he's kind of promo. The first <laughs> match is uh, the pre show match, of course, uh, Serena D, Alison K mm -hmm. for the NWA Women's World world title. Uh, who are you going for and why? My first prediction, Jack, right. Serena Deeb. Oh, I'm going for it. I think she's going to retain the title here. She's uh, only held the title for a couple of weeks at this point. I only had one successful defense so far on Dynamite. So I think with it being an AEW pre-show as well, I can't see the NWA wanting the title to change hands on a show that's not their own. Although there'll be more eyes on yeah. the match. I think they'll rather a title change happen on their own show. So for that reason, I think Deeb is going to retain here. But who do you have? I, I've got Deeb as well, uh, and pretty much for the same reasons that you've said. Uh, yeah, I don't think the NWA will want their title to change on the pre-show yeah. of an AEW show. And Deeb's only just won the belt, so Deeb also for me. Deeb. 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 <laughs> I'm delighted to see Alison Kay as part of AEW here and the former NWA Women's World Champion does have a legit reason to be in there with Serena Deeb. I think they'll have a great match. I think Thunder Rosa will be involved. There's been some back and forth online with those two, but I can see Serena Deeb leaving as NWA Women's World Champion and a good time will be had by all. Next up, we have Orange Cassidy versus John Silver of the Dark Order, and I've just got to give it to Cassidy here. He's by far one of the most over members of the AEW roster at the moment. While an upset victory for Silver may be fun, I just don't think it's the right way for Cassidy to lose, you know, at this time, at this juncture for him as a character. I think it's going to be a hell of an entertaining match, but Cassidy's going to have to come out on top and just, you know, reiterate the fact that he is a credible threat when he brings it. Now, as much as I love Johnny, Hungy, and all that good stuff within the realms of kayfabe and storyline in AEW, I just can't see the big star that is Orange Cassidy here in November of 2020, losing to somebody while as entertaining as he is, the beautiful little gremlin, someone who within the realms of kayfabe maybe isn't on the same level as an Orange Cassidy. Therefore, on the big pay-per-view, I'm going for an Orange Cassidy victory. So on the main card now, we've got Orange Cassidy taking on John Silver of the Dark Order. Number four, we think. Number I four. I think he's number four. He's number four, I think. But uh, who do you have and why? Uh, I really wanted to go for John Silver. Right. Because I love pirates. But instead, <laughs> I'm going to have to go for Orange Cassidy. I get that it would be hilarious and brilliant if John Silver pulled out an underdog win out of nowhere. It would be insane. But not yet. 
Uh, for I a build up to it. Do, yeah, build up to that I, Daniel Bryan WrestleMania 30 moment. Well, absolutely. And I don't think we're going to do that yet with the yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize what you said there. I was like, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, Future world champion. So I feel like I'm going to go for Orange Cassidy for now. It's bigger things for John Silver down the line, definitely. Yeah. But uh, it's just a, a safe option, I think, to pick Orange Cassidy here. But what do you think? Yeah, I'm in agreement with you on this one. Uh, I think Orange Cassidy, after the feud with Jericho over the summer and after uh, losing in the TNT title ma lumberjack match yes. recently with Cody, I think he needs to pick up a pick up a win here mm -hmm. uh, against John Silver, the Dark Order. And I don't think a loss will affect John Silver <laughs> at no. all here. So uh, I think uh, Orange Cassidy's got this one in the bag. Orange Cassidy is a national treasure. And he has been in some really high profile stuff on AEW over the summer. And he still has that sheen on him, that the aura about him. So I can't see him losing to John Silver from the Dark Order here. I think that this will be a relatively easy one for Cassidy, but expect shenanigans from the Dark Order, maybe bleeding into a feud with them. Regardless, good times will be had by all. Next up, we have Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara in an elite deletion match. And... Yeah, this one's going to be pretty mental. I'll just read down what I've written here because I think it's quite poetic. Normally, when you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you've got a 50-50 chance of winning. But this is going to be a cinematic match, so it's not normal. So Sammy got a 25% at best at beat Matt. And then you add a dilapidated boat to the mix, Sammy's chances of winning drastic go down. It's got to be Matt. This feud is cursed. So first of all, I'm predicting that both Sammy Guevara and Matthew James Cuthbert Hardy themselves will be either wearing suits of armor or they both will be wrapped up from head to toe in bubble wrap. Please stay safe, lads. But as for the match itself, as conflicted as I am after Sammy Guevara's absolutely fantastic baby face performance on this week's Dynamite, I'm gonna go for a Matt Hardy victory. First of all, so Matt can get the second win in this feud and we can move on from this feud before somebody quite literally dies. And second of all, it's an elite deletion match and that is Matt Hardy's match. So Matt Hardy should be winning Matt Hardy's match. It would be like The Undertaker losing a buried at oh, I'm just gonna stop speaking Matt Hardy for the win so for this one uh, it's a bit of a tricky one obviously it's probably gonna be a bit of a cinematic match the elite deletion and all that sort of thing logic would kind of dictate that they just give it to Matt Hardy because he well he won the match at all out of course but it was terrifying and in very dangerous circumstances I think to just bring this feud to its natural conclusion they're gonna just do they're gonna just do what they were gonna do anyway which is give Matt Hardy a win hopefully in a sort of safer condition than last time. What do you think, Owen? Tell you what, Jack, we're free for free here. I'm on, I'm on board with you again. I yeah. Think, I think with it being Matt Hardy's own match, the, the Elite Deletion match? Yeah, the Elite Deletion elite match. Elite Deletion. Get it, yeah. Not Ultimate Deletion, Elite, elite deletion. deletion. Even though he's, get not, it right. he's not in the Elite, but it's fine. Yeah, but he, he wants to join in. He's he got, wants to get involved. He's got the private party, boys. He doesn't need to be in the Elite. But yeah, I think Sammy can take a loss and it won't affect him too much. Yeah. And I just want this feud to be over. <laughs> so hopefully I just want it so done it's cursed Jack it needs to end and I can see Matt picking up the win and then both gents moving on to new new things nobody does the cinematic match quite like Matt Hardy the elite deletion is gonna be fun and I think this is the end of the Hardy Guevara story. They've, uh, they've not really seen, so we've seen Guevara get some one-ups on Hardy on television, but I think on pay-per-view they will draw a line under it here. I think we will see the return of Vanguard in some way, shape or form. I think we'll see a dilapidated boat and I think it'll be good times had by all. Next up, we have Chris Jericho versus MJF. And if MJF wins, he's allowed into the inner circle. Now, I'm gonna have to take MJF with this one because AEW, if, like, if only one thing that I could isolate about AEW that I love the most, I think the way that they build their storylines, their promo work, the vignettes, everything is just so well done, so well thought out. And I think that, you know, putting MJF into the inner circle, it's something that's been teased before. It's something that will give us a lot of TV gold before it inevitably explodes. And eventually all things have to come to an end. And MJF being brought into the circle and then it all falling apart somewhere down the line, maybe next year. It'll be nice though when there's that brief little moment for, you know, a month or two where they're all just on the same page 
and everything's just great. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it? It has got to be an MJF victory here, hasn't it? Because we're all absolutely gagging to see which way AEW would go with MJF inside the inner circle with Le Champion himself, Chris Jericho. Will MJF fall in line behind Chris Jericho or will he try to take over the inner circle from within? I don't know what I'm doing with my arms, but I think the latter is what we'll end up doing eventually. MJF will usurp Chris Jericho up underneath like that, a straight shot right Right to the taint. <laughs> the gooch. What am I talking about here? The spot between the bowels and the butthole. Anyway, MJF taking over the inner circle. That's the thing I think will happen. Jericho's allowed to go off for one last big singles run as a babyface, creating more memes than Reddit each and every week. MJF for the victory here. So Chris Jericho versus MJF next. If MJF wins, he gets to join the inner circle. He Jack, does. who do you have and why? Because of that, I've got to go for MJF just to get to the next bit of storyline, just yes. to see what happens next. But at the same time, part of me thinks, would they like swerve us a little bit and have Jericho win and then MJF does something outrageous to try yeah. and seize control. But in the end, I'm going for the safe option. I'm going to go for MJF. He did say, remember, what was it? He said he'd do anything, anything. to win this match. The emphasis on anything really in that did. promo. He yeah. really did. Have you gone for him as well, then? Yes. Ooh. Four for four. Oh, four, 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 four for four here. Four for four. Um, There's no collusion. It's fine. Yeah, honestly, we do differ on one. We actually do differ on we one. We spoke about it before. It's a big one. Wait uh, but, for that. But same, same as what you were saying, I think yeah. MJF, uh, to to uh, keep the storyline going yeah. forwards. I think he needs to join the inner circle. And then we get more banter <laughs> with Jericho and MJF. Yeah, cool. A, a few more dinner debonairs. It's gonna be fantastic. A few more swing classics. Can't wait. We're going for MJF. Oh yes. Weirdly, this Chris Jericho MJF thing puts me in mind of when Jeff Jarrett was trying to get into the Four Horsemen. But there's something a bit cooler about this one. I'm hoping it may break out into a musical midway through. I'm not massively optimistic, but I'm hopeful. Uh, I, regardless, I think Chris Jericho is going to win this. I don't think MJF needs to be in the inner circle. And I think they'll find some ways to get around it where Jericho wins. MJF can go off and do his own thing. Maybe they can have another sing song. Actually, they do have a sing song. Good times will be had by all. Next up, we have Darby Allen taking on Cody for Cody's TNT Championship. Now, I don't know why I settled on Cody here. I thought this one was very hard to call because both guys could feasibly fill that role quite nicely. On one hand, you've got Cody, who's going to attract even more lapsed wrestling fans who've maybe not even given AEW a chance so far. You know, they see Cody Rhodes, they might recognize that name. Maybe it's good to have him hold that title for a while as well because he's going to be going off... Well, he, I mean, he's already done it, but he's going to be appearing on TV soon and he's going to be more of a household name with that. I think it's called The Big Show, that like weird talent show thing that he's a part of I, but at the same time while he's gonna sort of be pushed up a little bit more into the stratosphere of popularity and wider American just general household name culture Darby Allen is just so over man he's so over he's popular with kids he's popular with adults and in a business that's built off the back of just nicking gimmicks and homage and pastiche Hulk Hogan looking at you He's totally original, and there's not really many people you can compare him to too much, you know? But I just don't know if there's more still to come in his story before we finally get that big cathartic win. If we give him a title now, it's going to be great, but maybe if we run him through the mill a bit more, and we really get everybody on side with him, and we make it this whole disenfranchised thing, and he finally, finally gets that moment, like, next year, that could be massive. Now, to be honest with you, dear viewer, I have absolutely no idea who to predict for this matchup. But inside my deranged mind, I do like the idea of a defeat for Darby Allen, sending Darby Allen down a deeper, a darker, a more quieter, a, a more sit up in the back tier of the arena. Ha! Huh? Path, if that last one is even the path to begin with. And what's more, a defeat sending Darby Allen down an even more deranged sort of character development kind of thing allows for more wacky and even crazier little vignettes that we've been seeing on Dynamite over the last few weeks. So there we go. Bit of a toss up in my opinion, but I'm going to go for Cody for the win to allow for more character development. If that needs to be done, does it need to be done? I don't think it does on Darby Allen's behalf. But there we go. Cody for the win. Cody versus Derby for the TNT Championship. Before we give our predictions, Owen, I'm going to say right now that last night, at the time of recording, last night's Dynamite, yep. changed my mind. I okay. Was, I was going for Cody, but Ooh. now I'm not so certain. Who are Ooh. you going for here? You left, you're leaving us on a cliffhanger there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm going for Derby Allen. Um, 
And I'm guessing you are as well by that, that sentence. We'll wait and see. Yeah. So I'm going for Darby Allen here. I think the, the reports came out a few weeks back that uh, Cody wasn't actually supposed to drop the TNT title in the first place. Ooh. Because uh, obviously Brody Lee, Lee won it from him and he was quite surprised that he was get, given that chance because yes. Cody went to go film the, that TV show. Went to hang out with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, sure. So, um, so obviously Cody's got the belt back now, but I'm assuming maybe the plan all along was for Cody to hold the title up until this point oh. for Darby Allen to pick up the win. Darby Allen has never beat Cody. We were having a chat about this off camera. He's come close. He's come close. Yeah. Uh, he's drew against Cody and he's lost uh, once or twice on Dynamites in the past. Okay. So I think this time, finally, Darby Allen will get one up on Cody and capture the TNT title. But who do you have? I'm going for Darby as well, but for a different reason. I didn't really consider that. No? Uh, mine was just purely because of what happened this week on Dynamite. Go on, then. Cody cut this big promo at the end of the show looking up at Darby in the bleachers, mm -hmm. and he was like, oh, you know, you want, you want to be the face of TNT? Well, I think you'd be great at that, but you're not going to beat me. And then he kissed the belt. Oh, he's kissing it goodbye, he kissing Jack. Goodbye, he's kissing yeah. it goodbye. Do you remember when the Revival faced um, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder on the pre-show that WrestleMania to win their first match? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When the Revival <laughs> came out to drop the belts, they kissed the belt so much. Clinging on to no, them. They were really like taking the mickey like i remember wild again on the top rope and just kissing the belt and i was like well they're gonna probably lose this match then i'm going for so, darby but anyway darby 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 because of the kiss that's the, that's purely the reason why the big smooch mm. cody got his roads back this week i think that momentum is going to carry him into this match with darby allen it'll be a good one it'll be a solid one but i think it'll lead to cody getting a decisive win over Derby and Derby will go on to do other things. Cody will continue this path of being this fightingest TNT champion and good times will be had by all. Next up we have the Young Bucks taking on FTR for FTR's AEW Tag Team Championships but if the Young Bucks lose they can never again challenge for the AEW Tag Titles. And as much as I kind of hate myself for doing it because I love both teams, it's kind of like choosing which child you'd save in a house fire. It's just awful, but I've gone for the box. Now, as much as I would love for classic tag team wrestling to win the day and come in and sort of stick it to the Young Bucks a bit, FTR haven't held the belt for very long, and I think that you could really, really solidify this massive impending sort of slow heel turn of the Bucks if they were to just take the belt straight off them because that means they can challenge for them again. It means that people are annoyed that FTR have had the belts taken from them so quickly. And best of all, they're founders of the company. They can go on like asses if they want. They can go on about how they're their belts anyway. It's their company. They are their belts. They're rightfully theirs. They are back in their right place. And it's just such an easy way to get nuclear heat. As I said, nobody wants to see FTR lose here, me included, but I think this is exactly what is gonna happen for the reasons I specified. Now we already know that Cody Rhodes can't challenge for the AEW world title, but coming out of Saturday's show, we could end up with the Young Bucks, just like their fellow EVP Cody, not being able to challenge for the AEW world tag team titles. And all of, well the three lads, not being able to challenge for the top titles in their respective divisions, that's an idea that doesn't rest easy with me. And that's because as I sit here, a jaded professional wrestling fan, that somebody's gonna say to Cody Rhodes, hey Cody, if you beat me, you you can go back to challenging for the AEW world title. So I don't think they want to do that twice if they're even going to do it at all. They are going to do it, aren't they? Of course they are. It's professional wrestling. So with Matt's ankle, the crucial storytelling plot point angle, whatever you want to call it, in this matchup, as we've seen so many times before, I'm predicting the Young Bucks will fight up from underneath and somehow, someway, come out with the victory. FTR lose the battle. Young Bucks win the war. Young Bucks your AEW World Tag Team Champions. Maybe. So FTR and the Young Bucks, a match that many people are kind of theorising could be the main event of Full Gear. Mm -hmm. Not sure I agree with that. But no, same here. I don't, can't see it happening personally. But I think, it'll, I mean, we can both agree it's going to be one of the longer... It's, it's pro it could steal the show. I think it might it be really the best could. match of the We've night. been waiting for this match for how many years? Four years? Five years? So Meltzer's been waiting for it for about ten. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's, he's born for this match. Even before FTR existed. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go, right? Now, okay, look, I know the stipulation is if the Bucks win. Oh, if the Bucks lose, sorry, they can never challenge for the belt again. Right. I'm... I'm going for FTR. Ooh. 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 Because. Controversial. I was saying to Owen off camera, right? I was like, I'm going for FTR. And he went, Jack, you're mad. Get out yeah, of this. You are. Spot. I think but you right. are mad. Well, I'll give you the reason, Go right? I, it just doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. I feel like FTR haven't held the belts very long. 
compared true. to the Bucks, uh, not the Bucks, Hangman and Omega. Yeah, that's true. And I think as well, the Bucks might lose and then do something heelish. They might attack Tony Khan oh, or something. Super kick big Tony in the <laughs> face. Super kick TK. And, oh, my uh, word. And get themselves another time. Something to really turn them heels, something to anger right. the fans. Um, but I, I'm not happy it's, about it's it. It's tough. It's really tough. I'm going for FTR. What this about is you? one that we do differ on. Yes. I think one of the only ones that we differ on. I'm going for the Young Bucks. I just can't see AEW doing the same prediction. To, uh, same prediction. Same stipulation. Yeah, yeah. Two years in a row and having uh, having them lose. Like Cody it, did. it was Cody last year. Yeah. And this year it's the Young Bucks. I just can't see them doing it t- twice in a row. Now I know what you mean, though. They could be trying to uh, swindle everyone. Don't patronise me, Owen. But I, 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 agree, good, I agree. No, with it's you. Good, I agree with you. I agree with what you're saying, but I just can't see them doing it okay. uh, two years in a row. So I think Young Bucks might cheat to win to make to keep them as heels going yeah. forwards, um, and maybe continue the feud. But then it's a heel versus heel dynamic, and I don't know if that's really going to work. But I'm going for the Young Bucks okay. anyway. I don't care. Right, we're differing on this young one. Young Bucks. FTR. Young Bucks. This is a match quite a few years in the making, isn't it? The Young Bucks and FTR have had this brilliant online bants for so long. And it comes to a head on Saturday. And despite the, the, the stipulation hanging in the air that if the Bucks don't win, they'll never challenge again, I still think FTR are winning this. I think FDR, I think they've, they've been the butt of the jokes for the Bucks for so many years. I feel like it's a good statement to make to have FTR pin the Young Bucks. I'm sure Bucks will get into the title picture again down the road, but I think FTR are winning. And believe me, when they get in the ring, good times will be had by all. Next up, we have Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page in the Eliminator Tournament Final. The winner of this match will receive a future AEW World Title shot. So in line with my prior pick, I think unfortunately Kenny Omega has to destroy Hangman's dreams here. We all want a full ball return of the cleaner, and I don't think there's any greater emotional stake on the card or in AEW at all at the moment. And for Kenny to win here, it would just really add that like, like nice little bit of spice on top, wouldn't it? Just that ultimate just F you to him. And it would just drag that chase out even more for Hangman, making it an even more cathartic win when he finally hoists that belt one day. But yeah, as I said, he's been chasing that belt since day one, really. And uh, unfortunately, I think he's going to be chasing it just a little bit more. The pressure is really getting to Adam Hangman Page, so much so that he appeared on this week's Dynamite, and there's no other phrase for this, everybody. He appeared pissed as a fart. We all know he drinks on the job, but this week he had drunk a little bit too much compared to what he normally drinks. Therefore, I reckon, first of all, the pressure of the situation is going to see Adam Hangman Page crack. Second of all, I reckon the return, the new and improved Kenny Omega, the return of the cleaner, and potentially the help of Don Callis, if you go back to Dynamite, look at the little picture frame that was next to Kenny Omega and that good little boy on the couch. Not Tony Schiavone, the little dog. <laughs> It's the natural Don Callis inside that picture, which tells me that Kenny was staying at Don Callis' house. The Winnipeg connection. Maybe Don Callis is going to help Kenny Omega defeat Hangman Page. Who knows what might happen? But what will happen, in my opinion, is Kenny Omega coming out on top. So, Jack, it's one of the big ones on the show. Kenny Omega. Hangman Adam Page. The winner is the number one contender for the AEW World Championship. Who do you have and why? Tell everyone. This one hurts my heart to predict. Oh. Because Hangman's like my favourite wrestler in AEW at the minute, I think. He's brilliant. I really yeah. sympathise with him because he was his friends were mean to him. They were. He, he did his own thing. He's it, done nothing wrong, really. He's done he? nothing wrong. He just drinks a bit too much. Yeah. But... I've got to go for Kenny Omega. Ooh. I think Omega's going to win and win the belt. Heartless, and then Jack. Down the road, that's going to lead to Omega versus Hangman for the belt. Yes. And we'll get a big happy moment next year, hopefully, when Hangman yeah. wins the belt from Omega. But for that to happen, first, Kenny has to win this match. What about you? I'm on board with you. As, oh. as painful as it is to say, I also do have Kenny Omega for this one. Same reason as you, really. I think, I think long term, this could be the... This could be the end of the feud for now, and then in a year's time, maybe when we do have crowds back, um, Kenny, if he is the champion at that point, which I think he might be, yeah. um, versus Adam Page again for the title. Adam Page gets his big moments in front of the fans, hopefully the fans at that point. I think that's where we're going down the line. But Me too. To get to that point, we need to have Kenny win here. So that's what I'm going for, big Kenny win. 
What a well-crafted tournament story. Two friends who have not seen eye to eye as of late meeting in the finals. The winner getting a shot at the AEW World Championship. And I genuinely think this is the night of Hangman Page. This is, we're getting now, what we're getting is the page I think that we should have had when AEW launched. And I think he's gonna get over Kenny Omega here. And we're heading towards an interesting time as Hangman Page is guy at the top. I think good times are gonna be had by all. Next up, we have Nyla Rose versus Hikaru Shida for Shida's AEW Women's World Championship. And I'm going for Shida. I think we're still gearing up toward that Baker match at some point. And I don't really think that Nyla really needs the title at the moment. She's got Vicky Guerrero in a corner and she's the most annoying woman on earth. Like she's such a heat magnet. It also means that we can clear the table of this feud. We can get the Baker match out of the way and then Nyla and Vicky can return down the line and go on an absolutely monstrous heel run. Nyla Rose for me in this one, even though just based off what we've seen on Dynamite over the past month or so, she shouldn't be anywhere near that title, should she? There hasn't really been anything built towards this matchup. The Shida reign has been a flop, but that really hasn't been her fault. AEW, for goodness sake, no matter who wins this matchup, put the women's division on TV more, so in turn, more people care about what's going on. It's really hard to get invested in the women's champion when the women's champion is just stood in the crowd each and every week. So I reckon we're going to take the title off Shida and give it to Nyla Rose, just because the potential of herself aligned with Vicky Guerrero is just, it's just, oh, it's mouthwater, isn't it? We saw a little bit of it on this week's Dynamite. Vicky cutting a fantastic heel promo with something none of us saw coming, but that's besides the point. But hey, AEW, put these lasses on TV more, will you, man? Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero by her side for the win here. Sorry, Shida. Poor Shida. It's not her fault, is it? Poor Shida. I'm going for Hikaru Shida to retain in this one because, and, and if it wasn't for this, I'd have gone for Nyla Rose instead, but I do think that Hikaru Shida needs to keep the belt because I think they're building Britt Baker at DMD uh, to take the title <laughs> Dr. from Dr. Britt Baker Dr. DMD. Dr. Britt Baker Get DMD, right. excuse on. me, uh, to become like a big heel champion in the future. Because of that, I think she needs to take the belt from a baby yeah. face. And she can't really take it from Nyla Rose because everyone will, everyone will be like, wow, the underdog did it. She'd be, so I think it needs to be Shida. Uh, and yeah, that's my prediction. Hikaru Shida, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement yet again. Jack. Oh. Big big theme here. Yeah. Um, I think Shida's got, got this one in the bag. I think she's currently the longest reigning AEW Women's Champion. Let's I think. just have a little check. Right carry on, that. carry on. I'll just have a little I'll look. I'll just carry on point. Uh, but obviously, she had that great match with Nyla at Double or Nothing she did. earlier in the year. And I think they could replicate that again and have another great match, but I don't see Nyla picking up the win here because, similar to what you were saying, Britt Baker, she's got to be the future of the women's division. She's got to be the future face of it. She's got to get the title eventually, and it makes sense for Sheeta to retain now so that Britt Baker can pick up the title down the line. I agree with you. The results are in. Yeah. Uh, Riho, 133 days. Okay. Nyla Rose, first reign, if she doesn't win again. Uh, 101 days. Okay. Karashida, Which means? At the time of recording, 166 days and counting. Uh, she is the longest reign. I know my stuff, guys. He's done his research. I know my stuff. He's bloody done it. Right. Big Sheeta fan. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero in her corner has been good stock, I think Vicky's a great person to have as a mouthpiece. I think this is Sheeta's night. I don't feel like there's enough momentum momentum behind Nyla Rose on the whole to upset Shida here. I think Shida's doing some good stuff as women's champion on AEW. I'm not quite ready for that to end, but uh, I think that's why I think Shida's winning this. I think it's not going to be a clean, easy win. I think she's going to eke it out, but she's going to do it and good times will be had by all. And finally, we have our main event, which pits Eddie Kingston against John Moxley for Moxley's AEW World Championship. Oh, and it's an I Quit match. Again, sort of going on gut here, I've gone with Moxley. I don't really know how they're gonna execute this one, but I do know that it's probably just gonna be absolute carnage. It could be shades of Brett Austin, maybe we have one of them pass out, but I don't really have either of them pegged as the type of guy to go, you know, I quit. They're both pretty hardcore mental dudes. So whatever the finish is gonna be, I can't wait to see it. But just for the sake of safety, I'm gonna play it simple. I'm gonna play it straightforward and I'm gonna go for Moxley. There is no doubt about it. If a certain motoring journalist saw the promos of John Moxley and Eddie Kingston from this week's AEW Dynamite, he would have called them the best 
in the world. They were that good. Absolutely fantastic. But for this matchup, I'm going with Hart overhead. Eddie Kingston to become your AEW World Champion. Just imagine saying that a few short months ago. Completely unfathomable. Easy for me to say. But it's just because what might come after the fact. We saw a return on this week's Dynamite. That, of course, was War Geordie Pack cutting his own fantastic pro with all his pack looking friends it was great stuff imagine AEW world champion going up against war Geordie pack the story's already there I concede you probably don't need a title for this feud it's got that much of a story already to it but hey just imagine that the story's there the title's on the line more fuel on this particular fire Eddie Kingston versus pack is something I'm all for Eddie Kingston to beat John Moxley and become your AEW world champion. I'm going for it. Thank goodness there's no punishment this time around, I'm telling you. Finally, the big one, John Moxley defending the AEW world championship against Eddie Kingston. Of course, there's an I quit stipulation. I now want Eddie Kingston to win yeah. after that amazing promo last night. So good. At the time of recording. So good. But who have you got and why? As <laughs> As good as Eddie Kingston has been, I can't see him beating Moxley here for the title, which pains me to say because he's been absolutely outstanding since he's come into AEW. Yeah. That promo on Dynamite this week was out just incredible. He's such a good actor. He, he's, he's better than wrestlers, he's, 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 got a, he's got a future down the line in acting oh. if he wants to go for it. Watch out, Dwayne. Yeah, <laughs> Eddie Kingston's coming for you, he Dwayne. Is. But no, I think, I think Moxley has got to retain here for the sole reason that I think with Kenny, with our prediction both going with Kenny winning the uh, match against... Hangman Adam Page yeah. makes sense for the next big pay-per-view pay title match to be Kenny Omega versus Moxley. They've feuded before. Moxley yeah. won, I believe, that feud. So yes, he won. In that big, like, no DQ hardcore with the glass yeah. and everything. Yep. I think he won that one. Yeah, he did. So it makes sense for Kenny to get one back. And I, like I was saying, as good as Eddie Kingston has been, it just it makes sense for Moxley to retain here. So that's what I'm going for. John Moxley, who have you got? And why? Exactly the same as you, really, and the same reasoning as well. But... I have no idea how. I've got no idea right. how they're going to have Eddie Kingston quit and for it to work in the storyline and not to kind of ruin his credibility. Because he's, right, okay. he's meant to be like, even though he's a heel, he's meant to be so never say die, like all grit. And I just don't know how they're going to have him. It could be a situation where he refuses to quit and passes out or something like that. That's a possibility. <sighs> then what, that, I know what you mean. Then though. what's the point of the I quit stipulation? <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do it um, yeah. unless Moxley wheels his mother out on stage and try, threatens to... I'm thinking of Edge's feud with hey. the Paul Bearer thing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Push her down the stairs. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work, but I feel like it's probably going to be Moxley as well. Yeah, Moxley here. Don't like it. <laughs> the rise of Eddie Kingston in AEW. Chef's a kiss. And he's got a whole gang of guys behind him to make sure the result goes his way on Saturday. But as much as I love Eddie, don't think it is. I can't see John Moxley saying I quit to Eddie Kingston. I think it's, it seems more likely that Kingston will be the one that quits for whatever reason. It might not quit whilst in a, in a move. It might be a case of he quits to avoid something more catastrophic happening. That's quite a common way to get out of something like this. And it kind of saves face almost for Kingston in that way. Here's to Kingston eventually becoming the AEW World Champion because that day good times will indeed be had by all. Mm. <laughs> oh. yeah, that was worth the payoff. <laughs> So yeah, those were our predictions for AEW Full Gear 2020. As I said, we'll have all the usual content. We'll have a live stream with Jack and Owen as the event is ongoing. We'll have what happened at, we'll have graded. And yeah, hope you all enjoy the show. Hope you're all out there staying safe and we'll see you soon.